Steven is risking life and limb over there. You know, if you fall and break something, I'm still gonna put it on YouTube, Steven. That makes it better. <laughs> But yeah, Steven is doing this in order to point out something to me, that there is fish poison. And fish poison, as you could suspect, is poison. And uh, I've reviewed it in the past in Jamaica, but why I'm pointing this out to you now is that fish poison has a relative and they're edible. The relative cut nut is edible and there are a number of different species that exist only here in Vanuatu. So we're gonna try to find those. We're not gonna eat this, but we're gonna try to find those cut nuts because that is really, really rare and only exists here. Oh man, my sunburn, <laughs> it's real bad. All right, Steven, let's try to find it. <laughs> oh, dude. There's nothing under me. No. This is sketch city. Oh man, worth it for the fruit, guys. <laughs> We started our adventure on foot by walking the streets of Luganville in Vanuatu. There was good news and bad news. The good news is that right away we noticed that this fruit was growing everywhere. It seemed like every house on the island at least had one cut nut tree in their yard. So here is a purple variety of cut nut. You can see it right there growing from the tree. They look almost like uh, dates hanging there. I mean, the, the tree doesn't, but the fruit kind of does. The bad news is that we didn't find any fruit that we were able to actually eat. Everything was either on private property or it wasn't ripe enough. It also was swelteringly hot outside. So after a while, we decided to hit the road. I think I've seen better days with uh, sunburn, sweating, but uh, yeah, we've decided to stop walking and we have now hired a cab for an hour to take us to uh, fruit stands on the side of the road. So we'll see what we can find. It's been melting. But the Navi normally, they grow high. Yeah, yeah. But like, like my, my wife have a seat. Uh -huh. Where now it just grow, just <clears throat> like this they give a fruit. Our driver was an incredibly nice man. When we told him that we were looking for fruit, he was really excited to share things with us and pointed out some really interesting plants that were growing along the way. Okay. This one we don't eat, huh? This, this one, one is uh, not, no, not, not good for eat. eat. Oh, okay, this oh, one you don't want to eat. Yes, this one is not for eat. It's, good to eat. it's make a shade, it's a rain, huh? Oh, it's used for dye. Do people use it to dye their clothes? Yes, yeah, sometimes, sometimes they use to dye the clothes. Huh. See, when you go to the white, yeah, it's purple like this, oh. and you wash, there you, go. you cannot come you're, out this. You're dyeing your, <laughs> dyeing your shirt purple, but... Yeah, I thought yeah that, that does it. This is, it's not color. No, okay. no, it's not him. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's a little... Alrighty. It's got, I just touched my tongue to it. It's like a sweet stick. Yeah, that's not something you want to eat, but yeah, it is sweet. Not bad. Yeah, not too bad. But if it's something people don't eat, yeah, probably shouldn't eat it. <laughs> we visited five markets around this island trying to find the cut nut for sale, and in every case, we left empty-handed. As it turned out, we visited a little bit too early for the fruiting season. It was such a tease to see these fruits growing in people's yards everywhere as we went from market to market where we were not able to find the fruit. After we visited the final market and we went back into our taxi, ready to go back to the hotel, our driver told us not to worry. While we were looking for fruit in the market, he called his wife and asked her if they had any on their property that was ready to go, and she said yes. So he invited us over to his home. Grow like this, you give the fruit, give fruit, give fruit. Oh yeah, yeah, you mentioned that. He has a dwarf cut nut that fruits this tall. 
Oh, nice. Same like a nose, not a big stump, but a little yeah. twelve nose. Yeah. It's got a lovely garden. Yeah. <laughs> In their backyard, they had a wonderful collection of fruit trees that they wanted to show us. Okay, thank you. Oh, they're nice. These big size. What do you call these here? Uh, cherries. Just cherries? Yes, okay. just cherries. In the U.S., we call these strawberry tree fruit. Okay. Strawberry tree fruit. I'm excited. These look great. I've had one like this before. Yeah, it's the local varieties of Muntingia calabra, scientific name. Mm -hmm. I like those. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. They usually, to me, they taste like uh, strawberry Nesquik. Milky strawberry. I like, they taste like popcorn to me. Popcorn? I don't know. You're talking about okay. popcorn. Wait, let me see. Oh, you're right, they do. Huh. And strawberry Nesquik. People love their fruit here. As we've been going around, people just like pick it, pick the local fruit. Like they're they're very knowledgeable about the things that grow here. So we're asking about certain things. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, I know that one. Like, have you had this one, this one? And uh, he's like, you're not gonna find this at the market. We have some things at my home. Let's see, I'll take you to my house. We'll like, I'll show you what we're growing. So we're at the taxi driver's house. <laughs> and uh, this is one of the things that he's growing here. <laughs> you see them hunting down some more behind me. I love this. I, you know, this is something I've had before. Uh, Steven's had it before, but so much of you know what we do is not just to try new things, but the adventure in getting it. And this is a fun adventure. Do you have something different there? Oh no, same thing. But same just, thing. Uh, but you know, it's, it's it's different varieties, different genetics, place to place. Things don't taste the same. These are fairly large for this type of fruit, and this yeah. is their trees that they're very proud of and it's nice to see a tree that someone's proud of and uh, he says he's, he's got a good tree of this and this is a good tree. And of course there was the cut nut. Not ready yet. We're not here in the right season. They actually had several different trees on their property and although some of them didn't have ripe fruit, some of them did. We got them. We got them. So these are not in season right now. Uh, these are good. These are ready to go, but they are not in season right now. These are off-season fruits. I think three varieties growing here, and two of them are actually ready to go. This is absolutely amazing to get uh, an experience where this is something that people grow more in their backyards than anything else. And uh, it took going to someone, a local's backyard, to, to get. His wife said to me that you don't eat the outer skin. So I'm just gonna pick that off. Yeah, there it is. It looks, I don't know, like a little bit like a, a large almond half or a little bit like a small flat chestnut, something like that. That's really good. That is really good. That was the, um, the purple one. It tastes like coconut milk. It tastes actually very similar to coconut meat but it's not as hard and crunchy, like more like biting into a chestnut. And it has a bit of like a chestnut flavor, but like the sweetness is like the sweetness of a coconut, like a three or something. And the sourness is like a zero. Very similar to coconut, but with that extra kind of like chestnut kind of kind of flavor thrown in. It's milky, it's refreshing. The texture is a little bit different because it's still crunchy, but it's easier to bite into. It's a little bit more crisp to it. That's really cool. Okay, so next, the green one. The green one is different. It's very similar. It's got a very similar coconut sort of flavor. But it's got a little bit more, a little more bright, a little more refreshing, a little juicier. It still tastes like coconut, but more like a young coconut than uh, a mature coconut. 
They're both really good. They're equally good. I, I think you could... It would be difficult to tell the difference between those, honestly, because they are so similar. But you can tell, you know, side by side, I can tell that they are uh, different. And just so nobody gets on me for not doing this. It's like eating a stick. Might be poisonous. Might be poisonous, too. So, don't eat the fruit. But the seed on the inside, aces. Okay, so why don't you try the, the purple one first? Cool. Mm, I like that. Yep. Tastes like coconut meat. Yeah. Do you get that chestnut flavor also, or does it just taste straight coconut to you? It tastes more like coconut than a chestnut to me. Um, maybe a raw chestnut a bit. To me, this is a new group of fruits. I'm real curious how this other one is. Mm hmm. Mm. It is different. It's fresher, maybe a little softer. It's sweeter. A little sweeter? Yeah. Any, any final thoughts about this one? This is really cool. This is one we've been looking for, for for a long time. I feel really privileged that we've been able to visit someone's home, that they invited mm -hmm. us here to try their fruits and, you know, they're proud of them. And for a minute we thought we failed and then magically we somehow ended up with two varieties, so, or yeah. two species. Yeah, amazing. So, there you have it, something very, very rare that you can only really get here in Vanuatu. So, uh, I'm I'm amazed by this one. Such an interesting one that this is related to something that will kill you, the fish poison. And yet, this one is l much loved throughout here, so much that you see it throughout uh, Vanuatu in just people's backyards, and people just like pick them and eat them. And uh, this is one that you definitely want to eat fresh. I, I was told by the taxi driver, you never, never cook this one, you always eat it fresh because and you can see why, it's, it's nice and refreshing tasting. Like that that has a nice, uh, bright, sweet, juicy sort of flavor. I think you would lose a lot of what make, makes that nice if you were to cook it. But uh, yeah, amazing. So I'm, I'm speechless. This is, a, this is a really cool one to find. And uh, we're only on like day three of our trip here. So there's a lot more to find. So I'll see you next time. See you later. Buy the shirt. Buy the shirt, guys. <laughs> See you next time. I would like to give a very big shout out to Christina. Christina is a super patron over on Patreon.com. Patreon.com is how I managed to keep this channel going, so it is a huge help. Thank you very much, Christina. And to anyone watching who's interested in learning more about how you can help the channel out and get some really cool stuff in return, check out the link in the description below. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.